Alright guys, welcome back to the second video of this series. In this one, we're going to be setting up our V-Ray lighting. So we're going to be using dome lights. And then we're also going to be talking about how to set up your reflection or specular maps and how to do some basic materials. So we're going to be going over how to do glass in V-Ray as well as aircraft metal. That sounds interesting. Let's get started. So let's go ahead and set up some lights. And to do this, we're going to be using V-Ray. Let's go up here to our render settings. So I have V-Ray already set as the default render. And there's going to be quite a few things that we will change here, but we're going to do all of that later. What we do want though is in V-Ray, I'm going to change our max render time down to 0.1. This will limit our render time to a tenth of one minute or six seconds. And we're going to go up to GI and make sure GI is turned on. Next, we're going to go up to Create Lights, and we're looking for a V-Ray dome light make this a little larger. Now this is only to keep the object out of the way. It doesn't make any difference on how the light reacts. Now we're going to use this dome light to be able to use an HDR image. So we're going to select the dome light, click on use dome text, and then click on dome text. Here we're going to go into file and we're going to look in the source images folder. I actually have two set up here. I'm just going to use this one and click OK. Now to see it in the viewport, you're going to click on the little texture switch and then it is displayed in the viewport. Now I'm gonna go into IPR and then just have a look at what this render looks like. Now, the benefit of using a dome light is that it allows you to use direct and indirect illumination just from the HDR itself, which will become pretty important when we start using passes. Let's uh, go over to a perspective view. I'm also going to turn on texture view there. Okay, so this is completely clipped, which I will talk about in another video of why this is not great to use. But this is an HDR image, so that means we're getting a lot more values than what the monitor can display. So you can change this, but by changing this part here, you're probably going to make everything else a bit darker. I personally don't want to have to look at the sun because if we look at the sun, we should see lens flares and I don't want to have to composite lens flares. And uh, to do lens flares properly, you really need dedicated software for it, like optical flares. And I know that a lot of you guys probably don't have that. So I'm just going to cut the camera off before it gets to that point, And then we should not have to worry about the sun. You can also do something from another angle and that would be fine as well. Now, if you want to rotate your dome light, you can't just rotate this dome. The picture stays static. So what you have to do instead, if you look at the connections in the attribute editor, there is a node called V-Ray Place Environment Text, and this is how you do the rotation. You can also do vertical rotation as well, but for now, I'm just gonna leave this at the default. So this next part brings us to surfacing and texturing. Now, this object that I'm using came from TurboSquid, and this was a free object, and this looks pretty different to the one that's available online. So the textures were different. It lacked detail, which I added in. The UVs were not complete. I kind of changed some of the UVs. I did add quite a bit of detail to the tail. You can see we go to a wireframe view. There's a few other things that will make this look a little bit more realistic. Uh, but overall, it's, it's fairly good. The topology is all right. And we really won't notice any kind of imperfections. Like if we look underneath the wing, you can see that it's just intersecting. One of the most important things to get right in visual effects is time management. And time management is something that a lot of people have a problem with, especially if you're a perfectionist. And I consider myself quite often to be a perfectionist, and it's often detrimental to your ability to get stuff done. So with modeling, if I'm modeling something for myself, I want the topology to be absolutely perfect. I don't want intersections. I want everything to be UV'd perfectly. But for visual effects, it often doesn't matter. So this is not for like doing a game or doing something where the player or where the camera can look at any different angle. For visual effects, if you know that plane is going to be very, very small, like in the distance, you should not spend very long modeling or texturing or surfacing or anything. What's more important is the animation is good and the materials act how they should act from that distance. So in our case, if we look underneath the plane, there is no detail underneath the plane. So there's some detail that I added in the texture, but since the camera is not going to be underneath the plane, we do not need to waste time doing it. So this is one of the most important things to get right. If you can't see it, don't waste time doing it. Or if it's too small or you're not going to see that detail, don't waste time doing it. So let's take a look at the materials we have up. So to make this process a little bit easier, I have sectioned out part of the plane and already given standard Lamberts and Fongs. Now for this, we're going to convert all of these to V-Ray materials, and I'll show you the main jet one and the glass, but the rest I'm just going to skip over because it's the same process. 
So to determine what object uses which material, there are two ways. You can either click on the object and go to the material, which this uses metal dark, and it also uses jet. Or you can go to a specific material node, right click, hold it down, and do select objects with material. And anything that is highlighted means that it uses that material. Okay, so for this, what we're gonna do, we're gonna start with jet, I'm gonna double click here. We're not gonna use the material viewer because V-Ray is not fully integrated with it. And you will notice that there's lacking quite a few of the options when we convert this. So I'm just going to close the hyperchade and we're going to convert this. Now you can't convert it back from a V-Ray material, but all of the standard Maya materials have this type feature that you can change. And what we're looking for is a V-Ray MTL. V-Ray MTL, and that will automatically convert the material to a V-Ray material. And you will notice that the parameters are a little bit different, but they are all going to do more or less the same thing. You just have a lot more control. So um, also with Lambert, you don't get any type of reflections, but with the VRM materials, you do, of course, get reflections. So let's go into Diffuse Color, File, and we're looking for this T38 Color JPEG. When you do that, you can see that's been applied and everything looks okay. So this model here has very, very little detail in it, but in the texture, I added in some panels from a blueprint of a T38 to get the illusion of detail. And that's very, very effective as you will see a little bit later in this video that you can't really tell that those are real panels or just lines of panels. It's always better to have this type of detail modeled in. There's a lot more things you can do with it, especially if the camera gets close, you, you kind of have to do that. But at the distance that we will be viewing this from, you would not be able to tell when this is rendered. So let's just take a brief look at the materials here. So the original textures that came with this looks pretty drastically different. So it does not look realistic to the plane, even though the proportions of the plane are good. You'll also notice that this is not a standard resolution. So standard for UVs is going to be one to one or just a square. So what I did, I stretched this up and I compressed the UVs to match the scale. So if you look at the original model, this is going to look a little bit different to the one that I'm using here. So when I redid the materials, the color ended up looking like this. So this is from a blueprint. This is the underneath side, which was not originally in the map. And I also added from a blueprint, these panels here, and I added a NASA version of this. Now the proportions of these are not all the same, especially with some of these larger objects here. Like this is for the gear, but the gear is not viewed in this. So I just left them in the UVs but they're not being used in this version. For this next part here, I'm going to find a good angle that we can start looking at this material. I'm going to have the IPR open and we're going to start looking at the reflection. Now, a couple things about the V-Ray frame buffer, which make this a little bit easier to use. So if you click on this little button here, this allows you to open up some adjustments. So for example, you can go into curves, check mark curves, and then you can brighten up the image. So these are really good temporary adjustments. So you can see what you could use to composite these later. You can also save the this information in a LUT, which I will explain later. So if we zoom in here, you can also see there's quite a bit of faceting, so these hard edges. And this is because V-Ray by default does not automatically render a smooth shaded version. So to change that, we're gonna stop the IPR, go up to our render settings, go into overrides, and make sure you check viewport subdivision, and then close it. And restart the IPR, and now this is changed and it's smooth how it should be. So while I'm messing around with this camera, I'm also going to change my perspective camera to also mimic the rendered camera. So at an 80 millimeter, then I'm going to render this again. Okay, so this is a pretty good view for us to start looking at some of the materials and start messing around with textures. I'm going to keep the frame buffer open, but I'm going to close down the adjustments tab. I'm going to select the fuselage, go up to this V-Ray material. I'm going to change this material name to match what it was originally. So this is Jet. There were no textures provided for reflection or glossiness. I will explain these in a moment. So we are going to have to go in and, and add in custom maps for these. But for right now, we're just going to add in some settings so we can get a more realistic looking surface. But we will have to break up some of the reflections. Here, what we're going to do, we're going to go down to the reflection type. And there are several types here. I prefer Ward for doing this kind of plain metal. And we're just going to take this reflection color and crank it all the way up. By doing that, we're allowing reflections to be shown. This amount is the amount of reflections. So if this is at black, it's just reflecting nothing, even though the reflections are at 100%. Likewise, if you put this all the way up to white and then you set your reflections to zero, you won't get any reflections. So this amount is for if you have a map placed in here that you can't change the values easily, you can just lower the percentage of how much of that map is being used. 
Now, glossiness is a way of determining how mirror-like the surface is. So a bathroom mirror would be 100%. You can see your exact reflection. That would be 100%. Something that is going to be a lot more diffuse would be much lower. So if I lower this, your highlights are going to get much smaller and also more diffuse. So at 0.8, this doesn't look nearly as shiny. Now, right now, I'm just going to leave this at 0.9. Unless you're making a mirror, never leave this at 100%. Next thing is we're always going to use Fresnel reflections and we're going to use glossy reflections. But in order to get a little bit more shine on this, I'm going to unlock the Fresnel IOR, which is the index of refraction, to the refraction index of refraction. And what that means is we can change the refraction of the material itself differently to the refraction of the surface. So in this case, I'm going to set my Fresnel IOR to three and this is going to give us a, a nicer looking metal. For this next part here, I'm going to open up this history tab and we can allow history so we can compare to previous versions. So I'm going to enable history by clicking that power button. You can determine a preset directory if you want to, but I'm just going to use the project path, autosave, and click OK. So autosaving only works with regular renders, not IPR. But since we've already set a maximum render time of six seconds, this is perfectly fine to wait. So this took nine seconds to render. It does its best to hit that six second mark, but sometimes it goes over. So right here, we can now compare this to versions in a moment. So for this next part, we're going to open up Photoshop and we're going to take a look at how we can improve the texture. So I've already explained that I made this color image from the original image provided and I made it into a square as well. It makes it a little bit more convenient to use. We have the bottom side and then we have the two side views. And then we have some accessories here. This for a color map is perfectly fine and any other types of detail can be added to the reflection maps. I think a lot of beginners and a lot of students especially get confused of how to make a reflection material or rely on software such as Substance Painter to do all of this for them. And Substance Painter and Substance Designer are fantastic pieces of software if you know how to use them and if you know how to customize them. But I found that a lot of students using Substance, if they don't have their connections done correctly or they don't have any map in a reflection map, they'll say, oh, well, my reflection is just 100% white and that's what Substance said and that's correct and, and that is incorrect and I do think that it is a good idea to learn how to do things manually so you understand how they work. So we're using Photoshop here and I'm going to show you how you can create a reflection map. Now in V-Ray reflection maps are what you might consider to be a specular map and specularity is a type of reflection but in V-Ray specular reflections are calculated automatically. So a specular reflection is just simply going to be a concentrated amount of reflections at a specific angle. Okay, so what we need to do, first of all, a lot of students will create a black and white version. Reflection maps can have color, uh, but in this case, we don't really need any color. So we can just go into select an adjustment layer, go to hue and saturation, and just lower the saturation. We have to understand what a reflection map is actually doing at this point. So for example, anything that is dark would not be reflective and anything that is white would be reflective. But that's not how this material would actually work. So this is just black paint and black paint is still reflective. But if we were to use this map, there would be no reflections on the nose of the plane. Likewise, with this stripe and these labels here, they would have very, very limited reflections along with this logo. But the rest of the plane would be very, very bright. Any type of decal, if it would be made in the same material, like this kind of paint has to be removed. I'm assuming that you guys know how to use Photoshop. It is usually a prerequisite for doing this type of stuff. So I'm gonna speed up the process. So what you would have to do here, you'd have to select something like the magic wand, select these stripes, go over to your brush, sample the color, and you wanna fill this in with an alt backspace command. And this is a rather tedious process, but it is absolutely necessary for creating a realistic reflection map. You can even use things like the clone stamp tool to repaint some easier parts. Now, if you have a little bit of detail left in, that can often be to your advantage. But in this case, we don't want anything that looks like it's lettering. Any type of detail in the reflection map would simply have to be some kind of like rougher part of the plane or something that's slightly more dirty than the rest of the plane. And that's fine to leave in a little bit of detail. And as I said originally, if this was for a very big budget film or something that would have to be very, very close to the camera, you would want to spend a lot more time making this map very, very nice. But for something as simple as what we're doing, it's not that important. So don't spend a huge amount of time doing this, but you do want to make sure that the reflection map makes sense because if it doesn't, your visual effects is always going to look off. 
And the next thing we're going to need to do is find some kind of grungy map to try break up the reflections. So this is another thing that beginners often forget, but very, very clean reflections is going to make your object look like it's CG and n almost no material in the world is going to be perfectly clean. Even if it's polished chrome, you're going to get little tiny scratches here and there. So we're going to find a good map that we could use for this. So here I have this tileable metal material. I'm going to copy this and paste it in. And I'm going to quickly just tile this over the entire canvas by holding down the Alt key and just snapping it, grabbing a whole section, Control E to merge them and do the same thing with the Alt key and the Shift key. Merge them all again, move them all the way to the top. So for the blending mode, we'll do something like difference. This will allow the black edges to show up and then we can lower the opacity. Now, of course, I have not finished this one here. The same thing would have to be done on both sides, but I just want to show you how you can quickly add in some rougher detail. Go into Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and do something maybe around 2.5 to 3. Just kind of blur those edges a little bit more. You can then add some contrast with a curve. So click Control M to bring up curves. You can have a little bit more contrast there. If you increase the opacity just a tad, you do something more like that. So this is a really good way to start using a reflection map. I'm gonna keep working on this one, finish this up, and then I'll show you the final result. But something like this would be a good place to start. All right, so here's my completed map. Pretty homogeneous, and there's some edges and areas, but it's gonna be fine for what we need. I have removed all of the decals and logos and all of the, anything that was way too dark. This is gonna be fine for what we need. Okay, so now we're back in Maya. Click on our jet model. So in V-Ray, the reflection color indicates what type of values or colors are gonna be reflected. The amount is how much of this map or this value is going to be used. Reflection glossiness is gonna be the size of the highlight or how diffuse the reflections are. So if it's gonna be very mirror-like, as I said, you're gonna put this at a very high value. And if it's gonna be very low, it's gonna be very low value. Okay, so we're gonna load in our reflection map here. If you have a specular map, you would put it in your reflection color. You can also put specular maps in glossiness glossiness maps if you want to be able to have a more customized and more varied amount of glossiness. So we're going to click on the input connection, go into file, and we're going to load in that reflection. I'm actually going to stop IPR here, so it was a good idea to pause IPR or stop it when you're adding in new textures. And I'm going to do the same for glossiness as well. Even though that these are the same map, since it has no color, we can use it as a glossiness map as well. I'm going to restart the IPR. And now you can see there's a lot more detail on the plane, like all of these highlights here. I'm gonna stop this and do a proper render, and then we can compare the history. So going back to the original one that we had, this is gonna be down here. This is the one that we had with correct settings on in terms of the amount of reflection color and glossiness. This looks pretty good, but this is with maps on. So this looks a lot more realistic, just with those simple maps that we added on. And here's another useful thing that you can do with the frame buffer. You can set one to be A, one to be B, and you can get a slider so you can go in between them. Between these two renders, you can see that the, the latest one that we did with those two maps, even just more of a homogenous grunge map, we've added a lot of really good detail. And it makes the plane look a lot more realistic. I'm going to show you now. We're going to do the glass, and then we're going to go ahead and do the lights on the wings and on the tail. And then the rest will just be up to you to finish up yourself. Okay, so I'm going to minimize this. All right, so let's go ahead and select the glass. We're going to convert this again into a V-Ray material. So the most important things for glass is going to be the reflection and the refraction. So for the reflection color, we can crank that all the way up to white. And glass does have a mirror-like quality to it, so we can leave the glossiness at 100%. Next is going to be the refraction. I'm going to take the refraction all the way up to 100%. This is going to allow the light to pass through it. And then for the index of refraction, this is going to be the amount of distortion we get. This is a fine value to use. You could go a little bit lower or a little bit higher, but I'm going to leave this at the default value. And then I'm going to use FX shadows. Okay, so this looks pretty good. We've got the light passing through and we also have reflections of the environment that you can see down here. And if we turn around, you should probably be able to see a little bit more clearly. Let's go ahead and do the lights next. So this is going to be the port side light, which is red. Convert this to a V-Ray material. Now for the diffuse color, I do have a texture that I provided for this. Uh, it's nothing special, it's just something to give the illusion of detail. Uh, it's not even really UV'd. Uh, this is our left light. Let's grab that in there. And we can use the same one for our self-illumination color as well. I'm gonna load in the same thing. I am actually gonna use unique files for these just in case you wanted to change one of them later. Don't forget to change the name. 
going to turn on self-illumination GI so this light actually does affect the global illumination. For the reflection color, we can crank that up and then just lower the glossiness quite a bit. And if this light ends up being a little bit bright, we can, we can lower that either in post or go into the color balance and change it there. Same thing for this light, convert it to a V-ray material, let's change the name. Okay, so let's have a look at these. This looks a little bit bright, but uh, the whole point of this exercise is to practice compositing. So this is a good candidate for something that we can reduce or just tweak in post. So for right now, I'm just gonna leave it as is. Go to this light up here. This is another light that I have a texture provided. I'm gonna convert this to a V-Ray material again. Call this tail light. Now the diffuse color has a map and so does the self-illumination and reflection color. Now for the reflection color, we're going to take down the reflection glossiness quite a bit, more like that, and that should be good. So the next step here would be to go through the rest of the materials and apply either values, colors, or for some certain things, textures, but don't spend a lot of time doing it because most of the stuff inside the, the canopy, you're not gonna be able to see an awful lot. As long as you get the reflections right, that should be good and you have some kind of color. But I wanted to show you another way that you can quickly add detail without actually using a texture. So for this part, we're gonna grab this engine cover material. We're gonna convert this to a V-Ray material like we've been doing, call this engines cover. Now we're gonna lower this value quite a bit. Then in the reflection color input, instead of adding a file, we're gonna add in some noise. Adding some noise will add a little bit of variation. We don't really need to change any of the settings, they're fine. But we're gonna go back to the output connection and then we're going to go to reflection glossiness and we'll add a fractal. So if we look over at the hypershade, we have now added some detail to the reflections without spending any time in Photoshop or Substance or it's just a very, very quick way of adding some extra detail. Okay, so at this point, what you need to do is go all the way through and convert all of the rest of the materials to V-Ray materials, add in reflections, add in colors, and then we'll be ready to go for the next part. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching part two. In the next video, we're gonna go over how to make some really simple exhaust. If that sounds interesting, stick around for the next video. All right, so if you learned something, drop a like. If you have any questions, drop a comment. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.